Cell's King's Crown is finally here, and it's got almost everything you could possibly wish for. Dual premium suspension for maximum off-road performance, dual motors so you can outclimb and outrun most other e-bikes, and dual batteries so you can stay out for those longer extended rides. On top of that, you also get a lot of other premium components and specially engineered parts only found on eCell's bikes. To order this bike, check out the link in the description below. Using code MAX300 will save you $300 and help support this channel at no extra cost to you. Today we'll be going through the specs and components of the eCell's King's Crown and then take it out on the road for our usual tests. Let's jump right in. What's up guys, welcome back to the MCHQ. We're gonna go ahead and take a look at the specs and components of this beast of an e-bike, the eCell's King's Crown. Let's jump right in. This part of the video is going to be very, very detailed. So if you want to skip through this, feel free. But let's go ahead and start off at the top. Up top, we have stitched leather ergonomic style handlebar grips. This bike does come with a half twist throttle. Now for controls, you get two sets of control panels. This up here controls your lights, your turn signals, and your horn. And up here, this controls the rest of the display, which we're gonna go over in a little bit. And here's the switch to switch this bike from rear wheel drive to all wheel drive to front wheel drive. For a shifter, we get the Shimano Dior 10 speed trigger shifter. And this is actually a higher end component, something I've never seen on most of these e-bikes. So this e-bike does have some higher end components like this shifter. And speaking of high end components, this bike also has the Tektro Dorado quad piston calipers, which we're gonna take a look at in a second. And of course, these are the hydraulic disc brake levers. And this is again on the higher end of components of what you typically see on a lot of these mainstream e-bikes. Great job eCells for giving you very, very good quality components right from the beginning. You probably won't be needing to upgrade your brakes ever. Cable management does look very good. It has a lot of sleeving on it and there are a good amount of cables behind the headlight, but everything does look fairly neat and tidy. And this is without me doing any kind of cable management. And this bike does come with an adjustable height stem. The front headlight on this bike is turned on at the push of a button and it does feature a low beam and high beam setting. Now the headlight on this bike is interesting. This top button right here only turns on this top light in the center. So it's kind of like your daytime running light. And if you want to turn on the rest, you simply hold down the plus button. There's that headlight indicator and the rest of the light does turn on. And this is a very nice looking, very bright headlight. Speaking of lights, this bike also comes with front and rear turn signals. And these are, as you could tell, very, very bright turn signals, especially from the front. I've seen a lot of turn signals on a lot of different e-bikes and nothing is as bright as these right here. These turn signals are also flexible. So in case you pass by a branch or something hits this, it's not gonna break off. It's just gonna bend a little bit and then go back to its normal position. Here's what the back looks like. Also very, very bright. And something that I really love about these specific turn signals is that you get an indicator on your handlebars if the turn signal is on or off. Sometimes these turn signals, you turn on, there might be a switch here, but you have no idea if it's on or off unless you get off the bike and actually look at the turn signal. This way you can actually see if your turn signals are on. What else is nice is that you can simply turn on both turn signals at once and you can ride your bike around like this almost like hazard lights for an extra level of safety 
Go ahead and turn on the daytime running light and now you will easily be seen on the roads. Very nice. If you turn the bike off, everything does turn off of course. Go ahead and turn it back on and what you'll find is that it will remember the lights were on and it'll keep it that way so you don't have to constantly turn things on or off. You could just ride your bike like this all the time. So if I did want to light everything up with all the lights available, here's what the back looks like with all the lights on and the blinkers on. I don't think anyone is going to miss you on the road with all of these on. Here's what the front headlight looks like with all of the blinkers and all the headlights on. This top button right here only turns on this front headlight. It does not turn on this bottom rear light. For that, you have to hold the plus button and now you get the rear light, which of course also does act as a brake light when you hit the brakes. This top light right here is powered by its own smaller battery and it's turned on by this little button right here. Horn button right over here. Sounds like a small little beeping sound. This right here is great for pedestrians and pedestrian walkways. I don't know if a car would necessarily hear this and it does come out of this front headlight. Moving on down we have front and rear metal fenders. And these fenders are very robust. I can hit these, I can try and move them. They're not going anywhere because there's a special mounting system for these that I haven't seen on any other e-bike ever before. There are four holes drilled right here that screw this fender down into a bracket that's mounted on the front of the fork and the back of the fork back here. So this front fender is not going anywhere. It is insanely solid. And these mounts go into this metal shroud right here that protect the fork. And let's go ahead and talk about this fork because this is a very special suspension fork. So this fork is an inverted fork made by KKE. It is a higher end fork, not like the cheap stuff you see on a lot of other bikes. And it does feature 125 millimeters of suspension travel. At the top, you have compression adjustment. And at the bottom, you've got a place where you can fill it with more air for further adjustability. And some more adjustability down here as well. So check out this dropout right here. This is a very powerful motor. Typically, motors are almost never recommended on standard e-bike forks. However, this fork is specially designed to really hold on tight to a super high power geared hub motor. Here's why. So not only do you have the nut that attaches the axle to the dropout itself, you also have these Allen bolts down here that when tightened, squeezes the entire axle tight into the dropout. So even if this nut is loose, the axle is gonna stay in place. So this is a great safety feature to have just in case these are on the loose side. Sometimes as months go on, as vibrations occur in the road, these do loosen up by themselves. And this way your axle won't snap the dropout and it won't fly out of the dropout. And these dropouts are very thick, very beefy looking, they look extremely durable. I don't think this axle is going anywhere. The fork also does have these bumpers to make sure it doesn't hit the frame when steering. I like to keep this right one a little bit on the lower side so it touches this point right here and there won't be any interference with steering. Let's take a look at the rear shock right here. This is a RockShox Deluxe. This little ring right here, I see a lot of people ask what this does. You go ahead and slide this all the way up and then you go ahead and fully compress the suspension. Maybe you jump up and down on the seat and this ring will move down to a certain point indicating how much travel you currently have. And this suspension is fully adjustable, not only with air, but you also get this lockout adjustment and a rebound adjustment right here. And as you can see, this rear suspension has up to 65 millimeters of travel. And here are those Tectro Dorado quad piston calipers that I mentioned earlier. These are very high quality quad piston calipers, not like the cheaper quad piston calipers that you see on a lot of other e-bikes today. And of course, these are paired with massive 203 millimeter rotors. And in the back, you get the same thing. Quad piston Tectro Dorado caliper with another huge 203 millimeter rotor. The King's Crown does come with this signature double wall rims. These are very, very strong and rigid rims. And that's important because if you're gonna have a heavy bike like this 
and potentially take it off of a jump or a drop. You do not want your wheels bending and twisting. And I think these wheels right here are really gonna help prevent that quite a bit. And check out this gold color right here. One of my favorite things about E-Cells is that they offer the option to have these gold rims. I think they look amazing. You guys let me know in the comments below, what do you think? Do you like the gold rims or not? For tires, you get these huge 4.8 inch wide Maxxis Minion FBF tires. Check that out, 4.8 inches. These things are monstrous and will definitely help you retain traction in rough terrain. The seat on this bike is on the wider side, which I do love because it makes it nice and comfortable. It does have a hole right here for ventilation. And if you push that little button right there, you get an extra light on the seat. Look at that. And you can cycle through different modes, solid, off, and this side to side motion right there. And it does use its own little battery which sits in this little compartment right there. Let's talk about these motors. So check this out. This is a Bafang motor for the front. As you can tell, it is a Geo 61 1000 watt rated nominal motor. And on the back we have a Geo 63 1000 watt nominal rated Bafang geared hub motor. What's interesting is I've had the Geo 63 on a different 52 volt e-bike and I currently have the Geo 61 on another e-bike that I own in the front wheel as well. And the Geo 61 is essentially the front wheel version of the Geo 63 or Geo 62. And what's very interesting is that there's some kind of magic that was done to these motors probably in the winding itself so that these motors have a higher RPM than what you would typically see on a 52 volt system. Because you guys are gonna see this is a 40 plus mile an hour bike and no other bike that I've ever tested that has a 52 volt system, geared hub motors can do 40 miles an hour and up. So I think these motors have windings that are made for lower torque, higher speed, and I think that's actually okay because you have two of them. So you have plenty of torque available, even though they have motor windings specifically made for lower torque, higher speed applications. Let's talk about the controllers. So this bike actually has two controllers sitting inside this compartment right here. It is an enclosed compartment. Fun fact, in China they call this a bottom house. But if you guys notice, the side over here is metal and the same thing on the other side. Typically what you'll see on other e-bikes is a controller sitting in an enclosed space and it's just loosely fitted in there with no airflow and it's just sitting there baking in its own heat. However, this side panel right here and the same thing on the other side is metal. And what E-Cells has done is they've actually put the two controllers that this bike runs on side by side and everything is touching one another and the controllers themselves are actually touching the external panels which means there is plenty of heat being dissipated outside away from the controllers. They're not just sitting there baking. If this wasn't here, they would be surrounded by air. And air is an insulator. It would insulate the heat and just bake in here. However, since everything is pressed up against these metal plates right here, that heat is being dissipated away from the controllers. So the controllers in here are going to be very, very reliable. And by the way, they are potted. And by the way, if one of the controllers in here ever does fail, this bike can actually run on a single controller You'll only have control of either the front or the rear motor, but at least it won't leave you stranded. And the two controllers in here combined top out at a rating of 60 amps. So that means 60 amps times a nominal 52 volts will give you, Alexa, what's 60 times 52? 60 times 52 is 3,120. 3,120 watts. That's a lot of power. Let's talk about this frame. So first and foremost, this frame is in this nice blue color that I really like from E-Cells. I think the blue color with the gold rims, in my opinion, is almost like their signature color scheme. Very, very nice looking paint job. There are some very interesting features about this frame that we're gonna talk about right now. First being that this is a large 19 inch size frame. So this bike is on the bigger size. I am 5'10 and I can 
kind of just barely be comfortable on this bike. I would have preferred a smaller size. And I know that Ecells does also make this frame in the smaller 17 inch size. Over here, there are some mounts for a front basket. And I think Ecells is developing some type of a mounting system that when this headlight is moved down, you can extend these mounts and have a front basket here if you want. You also get some mounts right here to mount a water bottle holder. Very nice, high quality looking pivot points for the rear suspension. Besides the front area, there are barely any wires in this bike. And for a bike that's got a lot going on, it's got two motors, two batteries, you can barely see any cables on this bike, specifically underneath. There are no cables underneath that you have to worry about when you're doing aggressive off-roading. Let's talk about these rear dropouts because this is specific and exclusive to this E-Cells frame. Check this out. These dropouts are engineered to squeeze the axle in place to make sure there's a very good contact using screws underneath just like the front fork. And this little spacer right here prevents this from being squeezed too tightly. So sometimes a lot of people go many, many months, sometimes years without ever checking this bolt. Sometimes the bolt falls out and it's a disaster for them. However, for this one, the axle will easily stay in place. Although it's always a good habit to once in a while, check the bolts to make sure everything is tight. Let's put that cover back on. This frame has actually been certified independently and has gone through almost 700 different tests. So E-Cells has been working on this frame for a very long time. And you can tell that this frame has had a lot of thought put into it. There's quite a bit of attention to detail on this frame. And the minimum seat height for this larger 19 inch frame is just over three feet or about 37 inches. And over height directly in front of the seat on this frame is about 30 inches. This bike also features an extra heavy duty adjustable kickstand. Just like other E-Cells bikes, this bike does come with a reflective logo. So this logo right here will light up at night for added visibility. Let's talk about these batteries. So to remove the main battery, you use the front battery key, put the key in, turn the key, and then there's a small latch down here that you simply turn and the battery will come right out. And if you look right here, this is a 52 volt, 19.6 amp hour battery. And if you notice, this battery is 2271 UL compliant. And it does come shipped with this sticker already applied, which is required. And you also get a little battery meter right here. Putting this back in, first you see at the bottom, click the top in place, remove the key, and you're good to go. The top rear battery uses another key labeled rear. Go ahead and turn the key, and then when you pull the battery, it'll easily slide right out. And this battery is a 15 amp hour battery, a little bit smaller than the main battery, also with the UL sticker. Here we've got another button to tell how much charge is left in the battery. Here's a secondary charge port if you wanna charge just this battery individually. And of course, we already talked about the light right on top. Put the battery back in, you just slide it in, and it locks in place, and then you go ahead and take the key out. And that's not going anywhere. And if you look, this secondary battery has a cable that comes down and neatly runs straight into the frame right over there, where inside this compartment, it will blend the voltages of the rear battery and the front battery using both batteries at the same time, keeping the whole system very efficient. And both of these batteries use higher end Samsung 50E battery cells, which are able to discharge each 60 amps of energy, meaning you can run this entire bike on either the rear or the front battery if you want. And over here is a third charge port. So there's one charge port on this side for the main battery. The rear battery also has its own charge port, but if you plug the charger in here, you can actually charge both of these batteries at the same time. So instead of having to send you two chargers like some other companies do, they make it so that you can use one charger on any battery you want, both at the same time or one at a time. For a charger, this bike comes with an actively cooled, see that exhaust fan right there? Five amp charger. And here is our 10 speed Shimano Dior CSH650-10 Hyperglide transmission. 
This cassette features a range of 11 to 36 teeth. And you can actually see all of the numbers of gears that are labeled on each and every single gear. And the chain is controlled by this Shimano 10 speed Dior RDM 6000 rear derailleur, which has an interesting system. It's kind of like a clutch. They call it Dynasys technology. So this tab right here, if you turn this on, which it is right now, it dampens a lot of the movement of the derailleur, similar to a clutch. If I go ahead and turn this off, now it can move again. And having this clutch derailleur is gonna help keep the chain on, especially when there's only this one guard on one side of the chain ring. The chain on this bike is KMC X10E with an advertised stretch proof treatment, high torsion resistance, and triple X durability. I would have liked to see a derailleur guard on this area. And yes, I am gonna nitpick because this is a very expensive e-bike. We do, however, get a very nice looking rubber protector right here, protecting the frame from chain slap. This bike has a 46 tooth pro wheel crank that I think is pretty good for the speeds that this bike can handle and for the range that this rear cassette provides. And behind this chain ring is a torque sensor for those of you that like torque sensors. That means that this bike will be good for exercise, even though it gives you a lot of power from the front and the back motors. The torque sensor will force you to exercise if you want to use pedal assist. You can of course increase the level to make it easier or you go ahead and just use the throttle like I normally do and don't do any work at all. You also get some very nice and very spiky metal pedals. In the box you do get a toolkit with some basic tools for putting this bike together and some rubber pads for mounting the front headlight. You also get a manual for assembly, although there is a fantastic video on eCell's websites that shows you exactly how to put your bike together as well. So you can use either that or this right here. And this of course will tell you step by step how to put the bike together. It also gives you some basic instructions on the different ways you can charge the batteries individually or together, how to use some of the functions on the handlebars like this motor switch, how to adjust the front and the rear suspension, shifter use, and basic maintenance guides. You also get two sets of keys, two keys for the rear battery and two keys for the front. And you also get this very heavy duty wrench right here that you can use for installing these large wheel nuts right here. And you can also take this on the road with you for a self-defense tool. Just kidding, don't do that. And if you do wanna remove this fender, eCells also provides you with these plastic shrouds along with the mounting screws for them. All right guys, let's go over the display settings and the display controls of the eCells King Scrounge. So first to turn it on, hold the power button and a nice looking eCells logo comes up. And over here we've got the speedometer and your watt meter. So this is gonna tell you how many watts you're pulling at a given moment. Using the switch over here, you can change it from rear motor, so only the rear motor lights up, dual motors or front motor. We'll keep it at dual motor. You've got battery voltage meters for both the rear and the front battery. That's something I've never seen on any other e-bike. You can go from zero all the way up to nine levels of pedal assist, although this is changeable in the display settings. We're gonna get to that in a second. Pressing the power button, you can switch from time odometer, range, your trip distance, and you're back to time. And to reset the display, you just hold the plus and minus buttons down and it resets the trip distance and the time right here. Notice that the trip distance is now at zero miles. The odometer is still the same at 100 miles. So to get into the advanced settings of the display, you double tap the M button. And from there, you press the end button again, and you can switch the language that this is in. We're gonna keep this at English, system settings. You can switch from miles an hour to kilometers an hour. Change the brightness of the screen. Auto off is after how many minutes does the bike turn off? We're gonna keep that at five minutes. Scenes, here you can switch the two things that are shown on the main display. I like to set it at power, but you can switch it to navigation. And when you switch it to navigation, this says waiting for data. And I think what this does is it syncs up to your phone. I like seeing the power output of my bike, so I'm gonna put it back to the power setting. Here you adjust the clock on the display. Moving on down, you can add a start password. Be very, very careful because as far as I know, 
If you set a password and you forget it, you have to buy an entirely new display. So make sure you remember the password after you set it. Here you can change how many assist levels there are. Right now it's set to nine. You can make it down to five, three, or this use setting, which looks like it gives you six levels of pedal assist. Interesting. Let's bring it up to five levels. Wheel size you can use to adjust the accuracy of your speedometer. I find that setting it at 29 inches gives me the most accurate speedometer setting. Battery setting is automatically set to 72 volts. And even though this is a 52 volt system, when I set this to 52, the bike did not run properly. So I wouldn't adjust this, just keep this at 72. Battery indicator, obviously we want voltage, although you can switch it to percentage or just turn it off entirely. Power indicator, you can turn that off, we'll keep it on. We're gonna keep ours on. Battery selection, so here's where you can choose how the batteries are run in dual battery mode. Currently, I have it set so that both batteries drain equally, but you can switch it to work sequentially. So first the front battery will drain and then the rear battery or the other way around, the rear battery first and then the front, or you can just switch it internally to use one battery or the other battery only. Keeping it in this setting where both batteries drain equally will give you the most efficiency from the battery and it'll give you the most power because you'll have the least amount of voltage drop. Work mode, here's where you can change the class of the bike. So I have mine set to unlimited, but you can also switch to class one, class two, class three. And this is great for if you're on a trail and you are restricted to a specific type of class or you wanna just keep it in the legal realm just in case you get pulled over you can switch it to a legal class and you'll be all set and you'll have no issues with the legality of your e-bike. Now, if you go down here, there's an advanced setting password, which is 1919. And you can adjust the speed limit of the bike, which we do have it set to full speed, which was 61.4 miles an hour. It already comes to you at full speeds. We obviously don't need to change that. Down here, you can restore to factory default settings. And it looks like here is some information that you can get from your ride where you can see your average speed, your range, your odometer, battery information, battery health, and some more info on the display. And just like all bikes, holding down the minus button is gonna give you a slow walk mode. So you can walk next to your bike going at a slow three miles an hour. The other day, I took the King's Crown out on a large 35 e-bike group ride organized by Chris from Chris Crossed. As you can see, the high powered e-bike easily blends in with the other normal e-bikes. I had my friend ride it around for almost 30 miles and here's what his first impressions were of the King's Crown. What do you think of the E-Cell's King's Crown? Uh, I think that you can't really get much higher end than that. What do you like specifically about it, like top two, top um, two things? Number one, it's literally like a couch, so you're just kind of cruising right along. I like couches. Super comfortable ride. Um, number two, it's got like a whole bunch of like small little gizmos and gadgets, like the, like the uh, brake throttle cutoff and stuff like that. So it's kind of got all the bells and whistles. Uh, the one thing I'd say I don't like about it, to be honest with you, is just the size and the weight. It's hard to maneuver. Yeah. Hard to get around, but yeah. other than that, I, there's not really much bad to say about it. Cool, cool, <laughs> awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, welcome. We are on the King's Crown from E-Cells. Dual motor, dual battery, over 3,000 watts of power. This thing is ridiculous. And we're gonna do all our testing now, the hill climbing test, the zero to 20 test, the top speed test, off-road test, all the tests imaginable. Starting off with the zero to 20 test, we'll line it up with this sewer grate that is definitely seen better days that needs a good cleaning all right so what we'll do is we'll set it into dual motors there's a little red switch down here that you can make it easily switch from front motor to dual motors to rear motor very nice we're going to bring it all the way up to pedal assist nine i don't know if that's going to make a difference or not but we always do that anyway and by the way these pedal assist levels they are adjustable you can decide how many levels you want by default it comes with nine here we go without further ado three two one go 
Soft start. Nothing too abrupt. 20. And let me show you guys the speedometer speed, just so you know it's accurate. 13.4, GPS is showing 13, 14. 13.4, 14 miles an hour. Yeah, see? We're pretty good, we're pretty close. Let's move on to our main hill climb test. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna do our main hill climb test now, throttle only. Without further ado, three, two, one, go. Tiny bit of throttle delay there. No tire slipping, so the motors do start you off nice and soft. So you don't wear out that front tire. Look at this. 3,000 watts going 30 miles an hour. All right. Nice. Crossing over the line at just about 32 miles an hour. Somewhere around there. Let's switch it to rear motor and see where the speed tops out motor wise with no load. All right. So here we go 39 miles an hour, 42, 43. 44.5, 45, 46, wow. Looks like we're topping out at about 46. Took us a while to get there. Typically motors, once you gun it with the throttle, it'll spin up to its full speed in about a second or two. And this one actually took a while to get there. And the reason we do that is to see where the downhill speed is, just to see if we'll reach that 45 mile an hour mark going down this mild hill. Wait for these cars to pass, and here we go. We're gonna pedal up to speed, see if the motors top us out. All right, we got to about 42 going down that hill. But remember, for whatever reason, it takes a while for those motors to spool up to full power. I've never seen that before. Those controllers are doing some thinking in the background. Let's bring this pedal assist down. This is uh, pretty powerful. And by the way, riding on the sidewalk, it is very, very smooth. This bike has some very high-end components for suspension. We've got rock shocks for the rear and a huge high-quality dual crown front fork threading the needle handlebar width test. On the wider side, that's gonna give you a good amount of control. In my opinion, I think this bike is really made for more for the off-road side of things, so having wider handlebars will give you more control, of course. Road is closed, but not for bicycles. No, sir. We got testing to do, folks. We got e-bikes to test. The e-cells king's crown must do the steep hill climb test. Bring it up to pedal assist nine. I don't think it matters, but we're gonna do it anyway. And as always, stopping at the line the goal is to see what is the slowest speed at the steepest part of this hill without further ado three two one go we're flying guys oh my god oh <laughs> we are killing it 17 miles an hour my god crushed it let's check the 20 mile an hour Brake test. Here we go. Get down to 20 and brake. That's our stopping line. These brakes are pretty good. This is a very heavy bike and these are off-road tires. They're not going to grip the roads as good as something that had a smoother tread, but these brakes are very good. Some of the best you'll get on any e-bike. Tektro Dorado brakes, so they are a higher end Tektro brakes, not the generic stuff you'll see on a lot of e-bikes these days. With the 203 millimeter rotors and the quad piston calipers, that's as good as it's gonna get. If you want better stopping power than that, you're probably gonna need smoother tires to make sure that the back wheel, when it does lock up, and it will lock up, has more grip on the road. Gotta cross this road, wait for all the rush hour traffic. It's 9 a.m. You could have made it. You could have made it. But I'm going to pretend as if you're going to fly out and not see me. I heard some good advice when you're riding on the roads with cars. Pretend like everyone is going to do the wrong thing. They'll pull out in front of you when they're not supposed to. See that line of traffic? I can't see what's behind this buildup of traffic. There could be a car flying out and we won't know. Oh boy. All right. 
think we're good. If you guys see me twisting these handlebar grips, that's because they do have a little bit of movement to them. I've had these handlebar grips before on different e-bikes, and uh, if I were you, I would probably switch them out. Not a very expensive fix. A lot of people switch them out anyway for a variety of different reasons. But these do have some movement to them. I can turn them down or up, so just keep that in mind. I would have preferred some locking grips on this bike, especially if it's designed for off-road use. Something to keep in mind about the brakes is that if you have the front fork set to a very soft, high travel setting, there is quite a bit of travel when you brake because these are strong brakes and combined with a soft, high travel front fork, there's quite a bit of a lean forwards. You can feel the entire angle of the bike tilting forward, which isn't good or bad. It is what it is. It comes with the territory of the components that this bike has. You can, of course, eliminate that to an extent by simply firming up the front brakes. All right, guys, this is it. We're gonna pedal up to speed and then see where this thing tops off going up and down this stretch of mostly flat road. Pedal up to speed. All right, throttle only. 39, 40, all right, 41. All right, we hit 41 going one way. Let's go the other way to make sure we account for any changes in elevation and wind. Same thing, we're gonna pedal up to speed and then see where the throttle levels us out at. Here we go. Pedal, 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 pedal. All right, 40, 41, all right. That is the fastest 52 volt bike I've ever tested. And we'll do a quick off-road test along the side of this road, just so we keep it consistent. But I am gonna be making a second dedicated off-roading video to this bike. And I am filming that today, but you guys aren't gonna see it in this review. So stay tuned for that video. And the suspension, of course, on this thing is insane. Tons of travel in the front KKE inverted air fork. Tons of travel in that rear RockShox rear suspension. And I am just throttling it for the most part. I do feel these tires ripping through the ground because number one, they're brand new, but the tire quality is fantastic on this bike. These are higher end off-roading tires and they are of course insanely wide almost five inches wide so of course this thing is going to be an off-road powerhouse wow don't fall don't fall don't fall okay we're good watch me now fall let's do that again yep going up powering through oh yeah i take a bunch of bikes through this little mini off-road section and they're usually okay and I say they're okay, but this just brings it to a whole new level. When you have very high quality suspension parts with a ton of travel, it truly just brings it to a whole new level. You ride one bike and you think it's okay, and you're like, okay, that's acceptable. And then you get on something like this and you realize, wow, I've been missing out on what real suspension feels like. And now we're gonna head over to the grassy field area where we're gonna continue the off-road testing and of course test this bike on the infamous grassy field hill of doom the second hill climb test that i've added into these reviews specifically for off-road machines and high-powered e-bikes let's see if this 3000 kilowatt 52 volt dual geared hub motor e-bike can do it throttle only and look at this power we're gonna get there real quick. I do not need to be on the side of the road with this thing. Pedaling, I get plenty of resistance, even close to 40 miles an hour. Look at this, plenty of pedaling resistance, almost at 40, that's outstanding. So if you need something that can keep up with traffic, but at the same time, have normal bicycle geometry, this might be a good option for you. Look at this, we're going like 35 miles an hour up this hill. Jesus. All right, we're gonna slow it down a bit. So I can go from that to just very slowly and gingerly riding on the sidewalk with pedestrians. And this being a normal bicycle geometry looks pretty normal. That is a huge benefit 
to having a bicycle with normal geometry and high power is that with the recent crackdowns and probably increasing crackdowns of Suron like e-bikes quote unquote e-bikes that fly around on sidewalks and pedestrian trails this thing will definitely fly under the radar especially because in the settings you can easily change it from class one two or three or this unlimited mode that i have it on now but if you're respectful with pedestrian walkways and pathways and rail trails you're going to do what i'm doing keep it on unlimited but just adjust your power settings so you're not flying by little old ladies walking their little dogs and being rude and disrespectful easy peasy we could just cruise nice and easy 10 miles an hour on the sidewalk and people see me and they probably just think wow that's a uh, just a giant bicycle they're not gonna think what's that smaller looking motorcycle doing on the sidewalk crossing on over all right guys let's see if it can do it all right here we go throttle only three two one boom uh, oh, nope gave out on me the motors it just cut off at like five miles an hour or so wow interesting remember guys these motors they're more so geared for speed at the voltage that they're at. I've had 60 volt e-bikes that struggle to hit 40 and this thing does it at 52 volts. So it's definitely not really made for insane torque, more of a mid to high range speed e-bike, but let's give it a little bit of a rolling start. 10 miles an hour. Now it just cut out. It looks like it does take more wattage or a higher turn higher torque dual motor system to conquer this hill it was giving me a decent amount of power and then the controller probably sensed that there was too much going into the motors and it cut me off but look at this we just pick up so much speed like i could easily fly up this with a rolling start you guys saw how fast we accelerated this thing does accelerate very quickly on flat and mild hills but on very steep hills like this it's gonna struggle by itself, so you are gonna have to pedal. Let's go ahead and pedal. So we're set to pedal assist nine, see how it feels. Yeah, if I'm pedaling, that's fine. That was very easy. Some bikes, I've tested some dual motor bikes on this area, and they struggle even while pedaling. And this is where dual motor e-bikes truly shine because you have two wheels pulling you up in a low traction environment and on top of that these tires are very fat and very grippy so for environments like this this is where this bike is truly going to shine and if you are going up something steep you're going to have to pedal at least a little bit and thankfully this thing does have a pretty low granny gear so you could probably get up just about anything with this you're just going to have to pedal a tiny bit all right let's climb up this hill one more time we're gonna pedal. I'm sitting the whole time. Hear those dual motors struggling, but we made it. Not too bad. I wasn't even pedaling all that hard. And now, ladies and gentlemen, we're gonna head over to our other off-road site to make our dedicated off-roading video. So stay tuned for that. Man, this grass is super tall. Look at this. Keeping up with traffic, easy. This is crazy. For a 52 volt e-bike, I can hit 40 miles an hour. That's insane. Specifically from geared hub motors, typically direct drive motors can only do that. But these things are made in such a way to give you top speed at this lower voltage. Very nice. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are just finishing up our off-road video filming. That's gonna be for another video. Stay tuned for that. Currently, the tires are at 10 PSI, so we're going to just pump them back up quickly using this little pump that I have, the Psych Plus pump. Link in the description below. This thing is amazing, tiny and powerful. These tires earlier were at 30 PSI during the top speed testing. On the side of the tire, it says max 20 PSI. We're going to bring it to about 25 in the back, 20 in the front. There we go. Set the PSI. Screw that in. Boom. We're all good to go. We could just set that right there, let it do its thing. Boom, 25. 
much, much, much easier than using a hand pump. Let's do the front. Wow, the front was at eight. That's pretty low. Set that to 20 and we're off. We'll just stack that in right there. Mileage check, we're at 18 miles. Voltage says 52 volts. All right, we are good to go onwards. And we are gonna be on some roads again. So if you look, I have my hazard lights on, the blinkers, both of them on, the rear battery light is on as well, all the headlights and the front blinkers. We're gonna be on a faster road with not a whole lot of shoulder, so we're gonna need the speed from this bike. Still giving me power well after 40 miles an hour. Look at this, guys. This thing is a bullet. Downhill speed, 42. Oh my God, 44. Wow, all right. Downhill speed, 44 miles an hour, and this thing feels so stable at the speed. It doesn't even feel like I'm going 40. I feel the power being modulated between the rear and the front motor. Sometimes the front motor has these blips in power at very high and very low speeds. It's interesting. I still don't know if that's a feature or a bug. You guys hear that? There's like small blips in power. This only happens, again, at very high speeds and very low speeds. Not 100% sure what that is. We're still flying, guys. We've been close to 40 this entire road. Throttle only. And I do have pedal feel, plenty of pedal feel, at 40 miles an hour. That's impressive. The gearing range on this bike is perfect. And with 10 speeds, you'll almost always find the perfect gear for whatever speed you're at. All right, that was pretty quick. This thing is an animal. All right, battery bar went down to orange. We are at 47 volts for a second. Bringing it back on the sidewalk. Bring it down to a reasonable pedal assist speed, nothing too crazy. Sidewalk of doom. But these tires plus the suspension makes this sidewalk feel much, much smoother than it would feel on a different e-bike. So now we're gonna go over the different pedal assist levels. And since this is a torque sensor, it's not gonna be limited by speed necessarily. It's going to be limited by how hard you push into the pedals, which some people like, some people don't like. I personally prefer cadence sensors because I don't like it when my pedal assist sensor forces me to exercise. Torque sensors force you to push hard into the pedals if you want meaningful power out of them. Obviously, the higher the pedal assist level, the more power the motors are gonna give you while pressing into the pedals, and that's kind of how it works. So a torque sensor, for example, I'm at level one. I'm barely pushing into the pedals right now. Barely, barely, barely. 150 watts of power, but if I push harder, see that now we're going up to like 500. And let's do the same thing with pedal assist, maybe five. So I'm barely pushing into the power. Now it's giving me way more power. A thousand watts, almost a thousand watts, 700. Now if I push harder, now it's giving me almost 1200 watts of power. And pedal assist nine, let's try that. So barely pushing, it launches you. If I go in the highest gear and I'm barely pushing, I'm getting like almost 1700 watts. And let's say I push really hard. I can really push hard and get almost three kilowatts of power from this bike. But going up this hill, I'm barely, barely pushing into the pedals, pulling a thousand watts. Very easy to get up this hill. Now, if I bring it down to pedal assist five, I could feel I have to push a little harder and then pedal assist one. Now I gotta push really hard to get power. That's kind of how a torque sensor works. Some people like it, some people don't. It is what it is. Let's talk about the contact points of this bike. So the grips are nice, they're stitched leather. There is a little bit of twist to them, so I, I would prefer locking grips, especially if you're gonna be riding this thing off-road. The seat is decently comfortable, not too wide, not too narrow, decently squishy. So far, so good, I've had no issues with it, and I do like that it has that light. Very nice little feature. The pedals are very good, they do have these metal spikes in them that dig into your shoes. So you'll have great grip on the pedals with your feet. And they are metal, they're not plastic. So they are durable for any unfortunate pedal strikes you might 
pad if you're off-roading, which I did with this bike, and the pedals held up just fine. Let's talk about the electronics on the handlebar. So, this bike has two sets of light controls. This button right here controls the, what I call the daytime running lights, the low beam lights, or one of the lights in the headlight. And then if you hold down the plus button, you turn on the rest of the light. Those lights on the side of the headlight and the other main light. And that's how you turn on the entire headlight. I very, very much like that I have indicators that my turn signals are on. I cannot express to you how much I like that. I've had a lot of e-bikes with turn signals and you could have a turn signal on and have no idea. There's no sound, there's no light, there's nothing. And with this, you can actually see, oh, look at that, I have my turn signal on, I can turn it off, you're not gonna forget, and just ride around with your turn signals on, making people think you're gonna turn, like you're having a senior moment. Horn button, right over here. It isn't a loud horn, I would say it's on the quieter side, and the higher frequency makes it so that people close up will hear, people further away probably wouldn't really hear it. If you're gonna be on the road with this thing, you might wanna get a much louder horn, Attach it to the handlebars and you'll be good to go. Cars are not going to hear this. But people on pedestrian walkways will. I do also very much like that there's a dedicated switch for switching motors. So I can very quickly switch from dual motor to rear motor to front motor. A lot of dual motor e-bikes do have the option of just using the front motor. I personally would never just use the front motor. I don't know why you would need that. I guess maybe in an emergency situation if for whatever reason your rear motor fails. But then again, you could just use the dual motor function and the front motor would still work. So I don't know. You guys let me know in the comments, why would you use just the front motor in a dual motor e-bike? Let me know in the comments below. What is the purpose of that? The shifter is a nice Shimano Dior paddle shifter, trigger shifter, whatever you want to call it. So you're going to have very crisp shifts through all of your 10 gears. But what's nice about these paddles right here is that they are somewhat out of the way of the twist throttle. Typically, I don't like that. If I have a paddle shifter on the right, I like a thumb throttle on the left, or I like one of those Mickey Mouse style shifters, those Shimano silver ugly ones up top with a twist throttle. That's just my personal preference, but this one actually seems to be okay. I can easily articulate the throttle and shift and nothing really is in the way, which is kind of nice. And after 31 miles of on and off-road riding at different speeds, the battery voltage is about 49 volts. Final thoughts on this bike, the E-Cell's King's Crown. This is one of E-Cell's top of the line bikes and the price does reflect that. This bike costs in the mid $4,000 range, which is quite a bit compared to most other e-bikes out there. And so I'm not gonna skirt around the elephant in the room. That is a big price. So why would someone be willing to pay that price for an e-bike when you can get something like the E-Cell's 5-star for somewhere around half that price. Well, number one, you get lots of battery. You get two batteries here, they're 52 volts, lots of watt hours, that's gonna give you a lot of range, especially if you're not a speed demon, you will get a lot of range. But speaking of being a speed demon, if you'd like to be a speed demon, you can do that on this bike. It will go 40 miles an hour and very quickly up most hills. Up moderate hills, it will fly up those hills, no sweat. This bike also comes with some higher end bicycle components, like a higher end Shimano Dior shifter, 10 speed shifter with uh, what looks to be like a, somewhat of a clutched derailleur, which is very nice. That's going to eliminate a lot of chain slap, help the chain stay on the chain ring as well high quality Tektro Dorado quad piston brakes. There's a lot of cheap low end brakes out there. Even if they're quad piston, they are cheap, which makes me question their reliability and their brake power. These are on the higher end of brakes. And so you get some good components with this bike. The frame design on this bike 
is like nothing I've ever seen before. I've never seen dropouts designed to be able to function without the nuts at the end of the axle bolt. So typically with these axle bolts, you should periodically check them on any e-bike. Sometimes they get loose on their own. Maybe you just don't tighten it down, whatever happens, and the nut comes off and then your front or rear wheel goes flying off your bike. This one is designed to keep that axle in place no matter what. So that's very interesting. You could tell there's been quite a bit of engineering and thought put into the front forks and this frame. Speaking of the front fork, there is a ton of travel on this fork, 125 millimeters of travel. In fact, there's so much travel, you can feel the bike lean forwards when you stop. I like to keep the suspension on at a softer setting and I can feel the entire bike lean forwards because of how much travel that suspension fork has. I can feel the whole bike lean forwards when I brake. You can, of course, change that. It's a fully adjustable fork, air shock, add more air, adjust the compression, lockout, etc. Very high quality fork along with, of course, those dropouts. And of course, while we're on the topic of suspension, you get that RockShox rear suspension, which has a ton of travel, a ton of adjustability. It's one of the more higher end rear shocks on the market today and i am saving the best for last this bike is dual motor and it peaks at well over 3000 kilowatts so power won't be an issue at all this thing is just a monster when it comes to power but you can tame it down if you want you can go into the settings change it to a class 3 class 2 even a class 1 bike if you want and you could do it all through the display tons of adjustability in the display you can see a voltage for both batteries. You can see how much power you're using. You see everything. The large frame is on the larger side. I would recommend someone be probably six foot and above if you're gonna be getting this large frame. I'm 5'10 with like a 29 inch inseam and I can ride it, but I would definitely prefer the smaller frame. I think E-Cells can also make this bike on a 17 inch frame, which would be better for someone my size but this is still rideable. The paint job on this bike is incredible. The blue color pops in the sunlight. It does look incredible with the gold wheels. This is one of the nicest color combinations out there, in my opinion. Very nice paint job on this bike. I think it's E-Sales' signature paint style, in my opinion. But of course, you can get it in lots of other colors as well. Lots of durability and thought put into the controllers and how they're set up and how they're cooled. Turn signals are a very requested item for a lot of e-bikes. And thankfully, e-cells did listen to you guys and they installed very good turn signals. I've seen a lot of turn signals on a lot of different bikes and they're not all that great. Yeah, they work, but you can barely see them. And you also can't tell if they're on or off from the rider's position with these. I can clearly see if it's on or off. I see that blinking light to the left, nice and bright. I can run both of them with the headlights, with the rear lights. Whether they're on or off is remembered in the memory. So if I turn the bike off, I turn it back on without touching the controls for the lights, everything will turn back on, which is a great safety feature in case you are riding on the road. This bike also has a lot of other awesome features like almost five inch wide, knobby treaded tires ridiculous for off-roading stay tuned for that video i'll show you guys how this bike did on the off-roading section and the double walled aluminum rims give the wheels a lot of stability and rigidity a lot of strength during those off-road portions i think another big benefit of this bike is that it actually looks like a bicycle it's not an e-motorcycle with pedals it's not something that looks like a Suron. It's something that I would say is easily acceptable if you find it on a rail trail or a pedestrian walkway where other bicycles are versus something that looks like a dirt bike. You're going to get a lot of looks. Yeah, you might even get the cops called on you. People will say, hey, what's this guy doing with a dirt bike on the walking trail or on the sidewalk? But with this, I think you'll have no problems. It does have bicycle geometry but it doesn't have typical e-bike power. This thing has some serious power. I think the top speed of a Suron, a stock Suron is like 45 miles an hour. And this thing is close to it. I hit 40 miles an hour easily on this thing. Some of you lighter and more aerodynamic riders might be able to go even faster. And on top of that, you get an American owned company that sells this bike, 
when you call in for customer support. There are real people on the phone lines in America that speak English. So you don't have to email people through China having to wait weeks for parts. And the owner, David Cleveland, he is 1000% obsessed with e-bikes. You could tell that he's not just in it to make a quick buck. He actually is passionate about what he does. And that's also a huge plus. So it seems like based on all of that, warranty won't be an issue. If something does ever fail on this bike, you can easily get a replacement part. And speaking of warranty, there is a lifetime warranty on this frame and a very good warranty on everything else. So once you buy this bike, you're not on your own. It's backed by a solid warranty policy. And guys, if you do wanna check this bike out, I will leave it listed in the description below, along with any coupon codes or discounts that are available. If you use my coupon code listed below, you will save $300 off of this bike, and it will help support this channel at no extra cost to you. It'll help me make more videos like this for you guys. Speaking of videos, like the video if you like it. Tell me why you like it. Tell me why you don't like it. Tell me why you're mad if you're mad. Follow me on social media. I am on Instagram, TikTok, Facebook. I have two Facebook groups, e-bike addicts and high-speed e-bikes, 40 miles an hour and up. Feel free to check those out. We have a lot of fun on those pages. Check out some of the e-bike accessories I have in the description below as well. I think a lot of you guys would like those, especially the pump that I had earlier. That's it for today, folks. Until next time.